stories of the Bible. Jesus calls Peter. This is Jesus. Hey oh, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. Hey Jesus. And was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Jesus began teaching about God's love and healing people of their sickness. One day, John saw Jesus walking by and told the people around him that Jesus was the Lamb of God. One of the people standing with him was Andrew, whose brother was Simon, who would later be known as Peter. Andrew went to find his brother and said, "We have found the Christ." Whoa! Really? Come on! Simon went with Andrew and met Jesus. Uh huh. I'm Simon. Jesus looked at Simon and said, "Your name is Simon, son of John." Yes, it is. But you will be called Peter. Uh, okay. On another day, Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and lots of people crowded around him to hear what he had to say. Oh, ah,、uh, uh, hello. Well, oh, okay. Jesus noticed two empty boats, for Andrew and Peter had left them and were washing their nets. Jesus stepped into one of the boats Peter. and asked Peter to take him out into the sea. Aye, aye! So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Peter, "Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish."、Arr. But Peter said, "We worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so." I'll let the nets down again, and this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. Whoa! They called to some other fishermen for help. Hey, help! And soon both boats were filled with fish. When Peter realized what happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, "Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man." Jesus replied to Peter. Don't be afraid. Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Really? Really? And as soon as they landed, they left their nets and followed Jesus. So Simon Peter became one of Jesus's twelve disciples and followed his friend Jesus throughout his time on earth. Stories of the Bible. Jesus calms the storm. This is Jesus, Heyo, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on Earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles, like walking on water, oh, hey guys, and even raised people from the dead. One day, after preaching to a crowd of people, Jesus said to his disciples, "Let's cross to the other side of the lake." You got it. So they got into a boat and started out. Other boats followed him too. And as they sailed across, Jesus fell asleep. Uh oh. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water, and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke Jesus up, shouting, "Hey, Jesus, wake up! Save us! We are going to drown! Don't you care if we drown?" Jesus responded, "Why are you afraid? You have so little faith." Then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves, saying, "Silence! Be still!" Suddenly, the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, "Where is your faith?" The disciples were terrified and amazed. "Who is this man?" they asked each other. When he gives a command, even the wind and waves obey him. Stories of the Bible. Jesus feeds the five thousand. 
This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Oh, hey, everyone. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. A crowd started to gather around Jesus. There were 5,000 men and many more women and children. Turning to Philip, he asked, Hey, Philip! Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? You see, Jesus was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Um... Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Hey, I got an idea. Then Andrew spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Jesus said, Tell everyone to sit down. Back, everyone. Sit down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and gave them to the people. Here you go. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. Want some more? I'm all good, thanks. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. You got it. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves and two fish. Stories of the Bible Jesus' Sacrifice This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! <laughs> the Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus Come in, come in. And give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seemed okay to me. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said, that he would punish Jesus and then release him. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, what? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own.
Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, This man truly was the Son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day. And ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? Hey oh! Ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Stories of the Bible Joseph and his coat So this is Joseph. Hey! You see, Joseph was the son of Israel and Rachel. Israel loved Joseph more than all 12 of his sons. In fact, he made Joseph a coat to show him how much he loved him. <laughs> when Joseph's brothers saw this, they hated Joseph. <laughs> One night, Joseph had a dream. When he awoke, Joseph told the dream to his brothers. He said, Listen to this dream I had. We were gathering grain when suddenly my bundle of grain rose up and all of you bowed to me. This made his brothers hate Joseph even more. And they said, You're going to rule over us? Then Joseph had another dream. And he told it to his brothers and his father. He said, Listen, I had another dream. And this time, the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. This time, Israel heard the dream and rebuked Joseph, saying, Will your mother and brothers and I actually come and bow down before you? The brothers were even more angry when they heard the second dream. Israel, however, decided to think about what Joseph was saying. One day, Joseph's brothers were working when they saw Joseph coming to meet them. One of his brothers mocked him and said, Here comes the dreamer. Come on now, let's kill him and throw him away to be devoured by a ferocious animal. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. One of the brothers named Reuben wanted to rescue Joseph, so he said, Let us not take his life. Instead, throw him in the pit. Yeah. So when Joseph came to his brothers, hey. they attacked him. Yeah. They took the robe their father had given Joseph. They hoisted Joseph up and threw him into the well. Uh. Then they saw a group of men from Midian coming towards them. Judah thought it would be a good idea to sell Joseph to these men. 
So the brothers sold Joseph to the merchants for 20 shekels. The brothers then took the coat of many colors back to their father and made him believe that Joseph had been killed. Israel wept for his son whom he loved. Meanwhile, Joseph was taken as a slave to Egypt to work in the house of a man named Potiphar. For Joseph's story was only just beginning. Stories of the Bible Joshua Leads This is Joshua. Hello. Joshua was an Israelite who followed Moses through the wilderness. One, two, three, here we go. Oh, hey Joshua learned from Moses as Moses led the Israelites through the Red Sea. And as Moses taught the people about God's law. Oh, yeah. oh, I see. Oh, listen up. One day, Moses was talking to the Israelites. He was reminding them of the law and all that God had done for them. Yeah. I'll see here, all you. When Moses had finished giving instructions to the people, he said, I am no longer able to lead you. Hold on. Do not be afraid, for God will neither fail you nor abandon you. Yeah. Then Moses called Joshua Me? and told him to be strong and courageous, for he would lead the Israelites into the promised land. Well, see? Then Moses died. To this day, no one knows exactly where he was buried. The people and all of Israel mourn. The people of Israel looked to Joshua to lead them, as Moses had told them. There he is. Yeah. God told Joshua to be strong and courageous, for he would be with Joshua wherever he went. He told him to remember what Moses had told him and to study the book of instruction. God told Joshua that it was time to lead the people of Israel across the Jordan River and into the Promised Land. Joshua told the Israelite officials to go throughout the camp. They instructed everyone to pack up and get ready to head out. Joshua told the Israelites they were going to cross the Jordan River. See here, this is what we're gonna do, okay? <gasps> and so, Joshua prepared to lead his people as the Lord had commanded. Stories of the Bible Josiah This is Josiah. Hey -o. Josiah became king of Israel when he was only eight years old. Yep. Now the country of Israel had a very long line of kings who did many bad things, including Josiah's father and grandfather. These kings did not follow after God, and they ignored his commandments and his law. But when Josiah became king, he did what God wanted him to and followed the example of King David. Eighteen years after Josiah became king, he sent one of his court secretary, Shaphan, to God's temple. Thank you. Many of the kings before Josiah did not take good care of God's house, so it was in need of repair. Hmm. Huh? While they're in the temple, Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, Hey! I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. So Shaphan took the scroll back to King Josiah and read it to him. <laughs> when Josiah heard what was in the book, he was greatly upset. Oh no! Because the people of Israel were not doing the things that God asked him to do, and Josiah knew that God must be angry with Israel for not obeying his commandments. Josiah gathered together all the people of Israel to the temple and read the entire book of the covenant to them. That very day, Josiah and all the people promised that they would obey all of what God commanded with all their hearts and souls. Josiah went on to help Israel become a people fully committed to God 
he tore down all the other temples and the idols that they had set up. He got rid of all the people who were doing bad things all throughout Israel. And he did all that was commanded in God's book. Never before had there been a king like Josiah who turned to the Lord with all his heart and soul and strength, obeying all the laws of Moses. And there has never been a king like him since. Stories of the Bible Noah and the Flood This is Noah. Hey! Noah was a good man who tried to do the right thing. Yeah! But in the time when Noah lived, he was the only man on earth who was doing the right thing. All the other people on earth were doing evil things and hurting each other. This made God very sad. So God said that he was going to send a flood to the earth that would destroy every living thing on earth because he was sorry he ever made them. But God decided to save Noah and his family. God told Noah to build a boat and fill it with two of every kind of animal and bird. Colored, bird, moth, okay, all here. Noah did just that, and then Noah and his whole family boarded the boat and waited for the flood to come. The rain fell hard for 40 days and 40 nights. Water! Water covered the whole earth, and the boat floated safely on the surface. Water covered even the highest mountains on earth, but Noah and his family were saved. God remembered Noah and all the animals on the boat. God sent a wind to blow across the earth, and the flood began to go away. After five months, the boat came to rest on a mountaintop. A few months later, the other mountains could be seen. Forty days later, Noah opened a window and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood had dried up. He also sent a dove out to see if it could find dry ground. But the dove couldn't find a place to land because there was still water on the ground. So the dove returned to the boat. Oh, hello again. After another seven days, Noah sent the dove out again. This time, it came back with an olive leaf. Oh, good girl. So Noah knew that the flood waters were almost gone. A week later, he sent the dove out again, and it didn't come back. So many months after the flood began, Noah opened the covering of the boat and saw that the ground was drying. He waited two more months, and at last, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Leave the boat, all of you. Release the animals so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. Okay! So Noah, his family, and all the animals finally left the boat. See ya! Noah built an altar to the Lord to make a sacrifice to God. God was pleased with Noah's offering and said to himself that he would never again destroy every living thing on earth. God blessed Noah and his sons and promised them that he would never send another flood. He gave them the rainbow in the sky as a sign of this promise to Noah, his family, and all of mankind. Stories of the Bible, Paul. This is Saul. Saul was a Pharisee who hated the followers of Jesus so much that he would hunt them down to be brought to trial in Jerusalem. And he would even seek to murder them. Saul was uttering threats with every breath, and he was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He asked him to write a letter to the Jews in Damascus that would allow him to arrest any Christians he found there. 
He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Now Saul went on his way, and as he came near Damascus, a light from heaven flashed around him, and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul cried out, Who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus. Rise and go into the city and you will be told what to do. So Saul got up and he opened his eyes, but he couldn't see anything. So the men who were with Saul led him into the city. After three days, a man named Ananias came to Saul. He put his hands on Saul and immediately, Saul could see again, and with that, Saul became a follower of Jesus. He became the very thing he had tried to hunt, and he immediately began telling people that Jesus is the Son of God, and he taught them about the mercy of God that he had received. And all who heard him were amazed. He then went by a new name, Paul, as he began preaching not just to the Jewish people, but to everyone. Despite many difficulties like being imprisoned, shipwrecked, and narrowly escaping death multiple times, Paul continued to preach about Jesus. Paul said that he would do everything he could to save people and help them know God. And that's just what he did in order to reach people who would otherwise be unreached. And many came to know Jesus because of what Paul said. Paul taught many in his day through his letters, but even more have come to learn more about Jesus through the letters of Paul that can be read even to this day. Stories of the Bible, Samson and Delilah. This is Samson, hey. who was the last judge of Israel. Samson was very strong, and he was supposed to bring God's people victory over their enemies, who were the Philistines. Now Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah. Oh, hey there. And the Philistines came to Delilah What's going on? and convinced her to find out what the secret to Samson's strength was. Hmm. They promised her a great amount of money if she could do this. Now you're talking. Hey. <laughs> Come in. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong and what would it take to tie you up securely? Well... Samson replied, If I were tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dropped, I would become as weak as anyone else. You ain't here! So the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings. <laughs> Look what I got! Go on, try. And she tied Samson up with them. Ha-ha, see? Hello, Samson! She cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings. Let me at him! So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Hey, wait a minute. Afterward, Delilah said to him, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up securely. Eh, all right. Samson replied, If I were tied up with brand new ropes that had never been used, I would become as weak as anyone else. <laughs> Let me try. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him up with them. See? Oh, no! And again, Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. What? Where? Let me at him. But again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Then Delilah said, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me, how can you be tied up securely? All right, I'll tell you. Samson replied, 
If you were to weave the seven braids of my hair into the fabric on your loom and tighten it with a loom shuttle, I would become as weak as anyone else. <laughs> now we got him. So while he slept, Delilah wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric. <laughs> Again, she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. Oh, look at him. But Samson woke up and yanked his hair away from the loom and the fabric. You gotta be kidding me. Then Delilah pouted, How can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? Hey, come on. You've made fun of me three times now, and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death of it. All right, all right. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as anyone else. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth. Hey, you! So she sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine rulers returned. Oh, Samson! Delilah lulled Samson to sleep, and then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. Samson's strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. <laughs> when he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. Oh, wh what's going on? But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him and took him to prison. Stories of the Bible. Sarah laughs. This is Sarah. Sarah was Abraham's wife. One day, as Abraham sat near the entrance of his tent, God appeared to him. Abraham looked up and three men stood before him. God promised Abraham that he and Sarah would someday have a son. In fact, God promised Abraham that he would have many children. Oh. Even more than the stars in the sky. Uh. Now, Sarah was very old when God made this promise. When she heard that God promised to give her a child, she laughed. The messenger of God stopped Sarah. He asked, is anything too hard for the Lord? Sarah chose to trust God, and she became pregnant, and she gave birth to a son. The son's name was Isaac. God's promises came true for Abraham and Sarah. Abraham became the father of many nations, and from his child came children, and from their children, more children, until Abraham's descendants were truly more numerous than the stars in the sky. Abraham and Sarah trusted God for the promise and believed that God was faithful. Stories of the Bible, Zacchaeus. This is Zacchaeus. Hey there. Who was a tax collector and very rich. Tax collectors were hated because many people thought they were liars and cheaters. Boo. <laughs> Zacchaeus lived in Jericho and one day, Jesus was passing through Jericho. What's going on? Jesus is here, woohoo! Zacchaeus wanted to see who Jesus was. <laughs> mm -hmm. Excuse me. Hey, watch where you're going. But he was too short to see above the crowd. Oh, that's it. So he ran ahead to a place where he knew Jesus would come. He climbed to a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw Zacchaeus in the tree. Oh, hey there, friend. Who? Me? Yeah, you. He said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. I must stay at your house today. Oh, all right. Zacchaeus came down quickly. He was pleased to have Jesus in his house. All the people saw this and began to complain. Ugh. 
Look at the kind of man Jesus stays with. Zacchaeus is a sinner. But Zacchaeus said to Jesus, I will give half my money to the poor. If I have cheated anyone, I will pay that person back four times more. Jesus said, Salvation has come to this house today. What? This man truly belongs to the family of Abraham. The Son of Man came to find lost people and save them.